Welcome back everyone to the Celestial Invitational. My name is D2. With me is Kyle D. And we are not the casters on the screen. Those are the Chinese casters for the Chinese stream. So don't get it mixed up. I want to thank Temple Storm for allowing us to broadcast on their channel and bringing this great tournament to as many people as possible and also to Team Celestial for giving us the chance to cast this in English. We have a great match for you next, going to be Life Coach versus Kalento, two heavyweights and two great players obviously. Let's take a look right at their decks. Life Coach going to be going with the Aggro Shaman as well as the Tempo Mage and finally it uh, looks like it's going to be a mid rangey type of hunter. I want to remind you guys that these players have to use all nine classes if they want to win this tournament. So the three classes that Life Coach used in the first round are not available now. That's why you see him going with classes that he typically does not play. So uh, what do you think about this matchup now that we see that Life Coach has to go with these kind of unusual decks for him, Kaldi? No, I was expecting Life Coach to actually struggle in this format. Uh, as generally, Life Coach is known for his uh, Mech Mage, he's really good at uh, Patient Warrior, really good at Druid, for example. Uh, been doing okay with uh, Priest and Huntlock, but he doesn't play all nine classes generally, and, and I think he may run the trouble. But talking about Kalento's decks coming up here, we're going to see the Control Warrior with the Monkey, we're going to be seeing the uh, mid range Druid here, double combo, and to round it off, it's going to be the Secret Paladin, ah, mid-range mid -range Paladin right. even, yeah, oof. So, power lineup from Colento, and I feel like uh, Life Coach is even going for what seems to be the three weakest classes. Yeah, absolutely. To round off against the three strongest. So this might be an uphill battle for Life Coach. Yeah, looking at Life Coach, I mean, Life Coach was the only player, keep in mind guys, to make it to the top eight who didn't have a winning record in the group stages. He was one win and two losses, but was able to make it through because there was a three tie, three way tie, excuse me, at one win and two losses, and he was barely able to squeak by with his superior game score. Now, looking at how he did with this lineup in the group stages, he did go against Firebat with this lineup. Again, guys, they are not allowed to change their decks, so these are the exact same decks that they use in the group stages, but yeah, in that situation, he lost to Firebat two games to three, and in fact, he was in danger of falling three games to zero before he brought it back, and it was actually a very close series at the end, Firebat being able to barely take that one out. And uh, the crazy thing about that was, if if Life Coach had not won those two games to make the series closer, he would not be in the situation right now, because he needed every single game to be able to win that tiebreaker. As far as Kalento is concerned, if I can find out where my page on him is. And uh, Kalento, with that lineup earlier with the Warrior, Druid, and Paladin, he actually did defeat Tom in the group stages. So as far as the success with which these players had with the current lineup they're going to be using in the semifinals, Kalento did a better job. How crazy is it though that we might have two players from the same group, Group C, make it to the finals now? Uh, Tom has already made the finals, and now Colento is looking to go and do the same. Crazy results out of these players, honestly. And, and it'll be exciting to see how Life Coach will be doing with uh, Mid Range Hunter and Shaman. I haven't seen him play that. He's very strong with his Mac Mage, but Mac Mage isn't as strong as right now. Exactly, yeah. It, was it the Mech Mage or was it the Temple Mage? Maybe I missaw what the uh, deck was there, but um, in any case, it's going to be, very, like you said, three very aggressive decks for Life Coach. It was the Mech Mage, actually. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, my mistake there then. All right, so, yeah, in any case, it is, like we've been mentioning over and over again, that Life Coach is going to be kind of out of his element here, playing three very aggressive decks. The Hunter, maybe not as much so. Uh, he's kind of used to playing the mid-range Hunter, but, you know, other than that, going to be kind of difficult for him. Meanwhile, Colento, you know, kind of known for being able to play lots of decks and being able to excel, even when he kind of puts his own crazy spin on it. So we'll, we'll be able to see if Life Coach can burst through the uh, the barriers that Colento will put up you know, trying to keep himself alive, whereas Life Coach is going to be trying to kill his opponent. So, um, yeah, who do you like in this matchup? I think I have to side with Colento, given the experience he has with these decks, and also given the fact that Life Coach's lineup doesn't seem to match too well with it. Yeah, generally, it looks better for Colento, having both the Druid and the Paladin would seem to pair very well together for a very powerful lineup, but we have to mention, though, that the 
Midrange Hunter excels against both Druid and Warrior. Then we have the uh, Shaman and Mechmates, both strong against Druid, actually. So mm. I feel like the key for Rife Coach to win will be defeating that Druid, but all those three matches got better for Druid in uh, in uh, TGT when the uh, Darnassus Aspirin came out. That just improved the, uh, anti, uh, improved the aggro matchup so much for Druid. So I think I have to give a slight edge to... to uh, Colento, but life coach could definitely run away with this one. But the key will be the Druid. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely important for life coach to get the good matchups and hopefully, you know, get, like you said, the mid range hunter versus the Druid. Also get the mage versus the Druid to be able to potentially snipe though, snipe that deck out. And that kind of leaves the question up to Colento whether or what he starts with in this conquest specify format. Because typically you like to start with Druid because it's a very flexible class, it's capable of winning everything or winning any kind of a match, but in this situation it's weak versus two of Life Coach's deck, so what do you think Kalento opens up with here? Oof, it's tough. Possibly I would be looking at the Paladin or the Warrior, but he might also go for the uh, strategy of playing his weakest class first, which would probably be the Druid. Now, it's, it's kind of a blind pick. I, I don't think there's a right way to go about it generally here um but i don't know he will need to win with the druid anyhow so if he leaves it for last or starts out with it it doesn't really matter in the long long run yeah it's kind of interesting to see how different players go about the conquest format some players like to put their weakest deck up first in order to be able to you know maybe snipe out a win there and get it out of the way right away but other players don't like to be down in games don't want to take that risk and like to put out their strongest decks first to take that lead right away uh, i wonder what's happening with the game here seems like it's taking a bit longer than usual obviously we have magic win right there it was actually part of the highlights that you see during the break the one with the uh, mana the mana addicts going at him for 15 damage each so in case you guys were wondering but it looks like we are finally going to get into that game life coach versus Clento going to be the mid-range hunter versus the druid so pretty good start for Clento though Clent or sorry for life coach with the uh, deck choice but Clento has double innervate in hand uh, do you think he keeps both or maybe just one it's a tough call I mean he could go for a turn to engine the lore and that doesn't <laughs> seem too bad but I mean engine the lore is generally not something you keep he's keeping both of them and I I do like that. Wow. Has both low step and on top of that the keeper. So you could go for turn two low step or, or turn one keeper even, depending on what happens. But life coach is a strong hand as well. Savannah Hyman is generally a very important card against Druid because the Druid generally just doesn't have an asset to it. Uh Web <coughs> Spinner into Mad Scientist into Animal Company. This is perfect, but Quantos hand is also really, really strong. Yeah, this is absolutely insane. Such a good hand for Midrange Hunter, but Colento may be able to defeat it with the hand that he has. I think he's going to, just going to pass here and uh, potentially favor going for uh, either Lothab into Keeper or Keeper into Lothab um, on the following turns. But uh, yeah, no real, no real reason to play either of these cards right now. And um, yeah, kind of crazy. I think Life Coach did keep... Did indeed keep the high main in his opening hand, correct? He, um, I think he had the web spinner and the mad scientist, and took a took a chance keeping that high main in his opening hand. He did, yeah. Um, I think I kind of just like passing even here from Colin Tommy. He might figure that there's no two drop coming. If there's a two drop coming, then he can mess it up with the keeper. If there's no two drop coming, then uh, then he doesn't want to give. Colento, or it doesn't, doesn't want to give Life Coach extra draw here with killing the web spinner. So I think the correct call is to do nothing, but it doesn't feel good though. Right. It's really funny to see Colento giving Life Coach a taste of his own medicine though, roping on turn one. But there is a lot to consider actually here for Colento. Not just thinking about future turns, but thinking about uh, you know every single turn combined, whether he wants to go for you know the keeper into the Lothab or and everything that Life Coach could do to kind of mess it up if you're Colento. And uh, it is very important because obviously this is an unfavored matchup for the Druid. But if you get a hand like this, you don't want to screw it up. You want to take the win when uh, you're kind of basically blessed with his hand. Alright, so Kalento does pick up the Wild Growth there, and uh, I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to see that card. It could be useful in the future, but as for right now, doesn't really need it in order to uh, allow him to ramp into his cards in the future. So, looks like he's just going to go for the Silence and the Mad Scientist. We do, I mean, the players do know 
each other's uh, all the cards in each other's decks because they were able to watch the VODs and these players weren't allowed to change their decks. So it looks like Kalento not wanting to get his Keeper frozen back. We do see there's an Explosive Trap, but I believe there's also a Freezing, so I don't think Kalento wants to deal with that at the moment. And we see a Huffer come out. Not sure that's what Life Coach wanted in this situation, but we'll be able to push a decent amount of damage here regardless. Yeah, probably not what he wanted. It's better than Leok, I think, though, here. I mean, the thing is, there's no really good follow-up, and, and Colando just has everything he could ever need. The thing is, though, if you have too much ramp, you may run into trouble, as the uh, top decks here from the Druid are weaker than they used to be, with the Darnassus and possibly even the Living Roots added for some players, or even the Raptor. Yeah, so there's a lot of options. Yeah, definitely. It looks like Kalento's going to go for the Lothop here. I imagine he wants to just use the Wild Growth the following turn uh, to be able to get into that Ancient Lore a bit quicker, but going to be having, going to be taking a value trade here rather than going into the Huffer. Could be a bit dangerous in the future, and we'll see how Life Coach deals with this. He could get a trade onto the Lothop right now, but uh, what do you think he goes for right now? Oof, it's tough. I mean, he may just have to go for the Minions. But how how does it trade then? I mean, what about just using one of the uh, well, using the uh, web spinner on the low and see what you get? I think that may be what I, I would be looking at. Yeah, definitely. As we see, Kalento experiencing a bit of fatigue here, trying to you know concentrate as best he can uh, from his home there. Live coach obviously always focused, as you can see here, laser eyed on the screen and. Definitely going to analyze every single possibility, but in the end, I do believe he will go for your play for uh, you know throwing in that web spinner first, and then potentially throwing in the uh, huffer as well. This is not face hunter, so you can't go too all in on smacking the face. Even if he gets Kalento down to 17 here, I don't think he has requisite damage to finish him off. Gets the tundra yeah, rhino. It's not good enough, but it's, it's something to play on the following turn, though. So not the best. Yeah. But not the worst. Yeah, but I mean, there is also the new 3 3 spider that lets you discover a beast. That wouldn't be too bad here. Uh, but he just has the option to throw the claw. I kind of like this Wild Coat Hero Power. You kill the Haunted Creeper and kill one of the special spiders. Yeah. The, the big thing here, though, we do see, obviously, that Tundra Rhino that Life Coach picked up, and uh, from there, I think Kalento would have to use his Drew the Claw in charge form to take it out. Otherwise, you could see a Savannah High Main punching it in the face right from the hand. So that could be a, a really horrible situation. Especially, yeah, if Life Coach trades off the Spectral Spider, that's the only way for Kalento to deal with it, is to go for the Drew the Claw plus coin into Hero Power. And... Yeah, it really, it's a, would be a really painful way to deal with that. It sure would here, yeah. I mean, it's not what he wants to be doing with his coin, but he at least has a follow-up. But let's say he does that. Life Coach goes for the Savannah, and there's no real crash. I mean, going for an Ancient of Lore at that point isn't even that strong. The 4-1 will be awkward because the Savannah does have 5 health. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it will be kind of awkward, too, if Clento does go for the the uh, Charging Drew of the Claw here, because it will still be a 4-2 when it's all said and done, and that could be something that can get a decent trade into uh, the Savannah High Main there. So definitely tough decisions for both players. Clento going to think about all the possibilities, but we do know if he goes for the Drew of the Claw in Taunt form, he's going to be in for a lot of trouble. Yeah, I mean, that's almost lights out then. Uh... So much damage. I mean, the start looked so good for Colento, but this web spinner is just turning things around. Yeah, it looks like he is aware of the potential danger of a charging Savannah High main. So, gonna go for that play and uh, take this out right away and prevent any sort of craziness from happening. And uh, if you're a life coach, do you just plop down the Savannah High main or do you kind of try to kill this off with an explosive trap? I imagine you have to go for the High main here. Yeah, you don't have time to waste here. And wait, the bow does change a few things up. I don't know. Well, the bow, yeah. yeah. Right, you could just bow and hit the face and play the uh, explosive trap there and prevent Kalento from ever hitting you in the face with that Drew of the Claw again. You can maybe go for the next turn, though. I think I may even like the next turn because you could kill whatever comes down due to the Hunter's Mark. I think I would go for the, for the Savannah High Man here. The bow is an option with the web spinner and the trap. 
I'm surprised, honestly, that life coach didn't roll with it, but I do li- agree with this play <laughs> in the end. Oh, Fortunate is the perfect answer for Colento, and this game just got turned around just in this Fortunate nature. Oh, but he's not going to go with it. Interesting. So, yeah, he dev- he had a trade. He had a way to clear off the Savannah Hyman, but now Clento getting rewarded for that play because even if Life Coach goes face here, Clento has the heal. But, I don't uh, know, though. I mean, yeah, this is... I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely tough, and it's very interesting that Clento immediately went for that play. It is mana efficient, so maybe he figures he can go for this uh, Force of Nature later. Maybe he's worried about some sort of trap, you know, preventing his, uh, his minions from being able to attack later in the game, so hopefully uh, he can proc it with the Force of Nature and prevent anything crazy like that happening. Uh, as far as Life Coach is concerned, I mean, Kalento... Life Coach knows that Kalento doesn't have any Innervates left, so he doesn't have to worry about any uh, Innervate combo coming out here, so not going to worry about you know dying the very next turn from these minions. So how uh, greedy does he get here? Does he hit the face... You know, it could be something like a second keeper coming down, being able to get a nice trade off on this uh, ancient lore as well. So we will see how greedy life coach can get. Gonna start off with the king's elect. Is starting the rope, however. Loses the joust. You always lose the joust. I actually was playing brand bronze spear in in this type of deck, and I lost both of the joust today. That's just how it tends to go. But I think there was no question uh, about going for the. Uh, about possibly going for the face Ooh. versus trading. I think you have to go for the face in this case. But wow. now Colento can clear and play the Nasus. He'll be at 11 health, but he will stabilize. Yeah, he can do so. Very interesting play by Life Coach, basically bluffing the freezing trap, but not going to work out too well for him because Colento has the Force Nature anyway to test for it. And uh, yeah, is he able to do make that play? to clear out the Savannah high main. He will stay alive, like you say, but uh, has had to use a lot of mana to make this happen. I mean, yeah, Wrath is also an option, keeping the 5-3 alive after trading. Uh, what he definitely doesn't want to do is proc the trap, because that would give a current, uh, life course definitely two damage to face and another charge of the bow. So that would be a very, very bad idea. Um, I think Colanto now will have to hope that life coach doesn't draw any more aggression. Another weapon, possibly kill command, would be very dangerous. Uh, also, he will need to taunt at some point, because I feel like the base is not going to go in Colento's way. But at least the Hunt doesn't do it, and Life Coach may be stuck with just hero power, and that's so painful. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a painful situation. And the funny thing here is that if he goes for the uh, Hunter's Mark onto this Ancient Lore, it's in... I mean, you're kind of in danger of getting his silence right back up to full health, which would be obviously pretty painful. Looks like it's going to just be a Web Spinner and a Hero Power going to face. And, I mean, it's kind of crazy because Life Coach is very close to winning, but Clento does have that heal, and the silence comes out. Not going to be too helpful here. Obviously, Life Coach didn't want to go for the risk of the Hunter's Mark, but... Clinto with a big decision to make. Do if you're Clinto, do you start trying to race here and braving that bow and uh, procking the trap, or do you just wait another turn after you heal? He I might think you may have to start going face now. I mean, having giving life coach life coach more time is just not going to be working in your favor. You don't have the combo, so you need to end this at some point because you do take one damage per turn if you hero power and he hero powers. So, yeah, he doesn't attack, okay, so he's definitely going for the long... Well, I mean... <sighs> I suppose what he's thinking, uh, speaking of Colento, is that if he waits and attacks in next turn, then he only gives Life Coach potentially one attack with the bow before Colento can kill him in two turns. Whereas if he attacks now, then Life Coach almost certainly gets two hits off with the bow uh, because Colento won't be able to kill him fast enough. So I think Colento's waiting to attack next turn. The thing is then, you know, you're taking two damage on the Ancient of Lore at least, and I don't know, I mean, maybe Colento is just reading weakness from Life Coach's hand, and that's probably a fair read if he just goes for a weapon spinner and hero power that that late in the game. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that, that's may, maybe what he's thinking here. 
The other thing to consider is that right now Clento is representing lethal if he does have combo because he can attack in and then get the lethal regardless. Now Life Coach realizing that that could be a possibility. Even though Clento can go for a 9 mana heal because of this freezing trap, it does allow Life Coach to be able to use his bow as well. And that would be very, very expensive for Clento to go for that 9 mana heal. So very interesting play by Life Coach to decide to go for that freezing trap despite the fact that Clento could heal more out of it. That's spot on here. Uh, now the 3-3 three, three comes out, the iron for Grizzly. I mean, I think I'd be surprised if, if uh, Colento doesn't go aggressive right now. He can at least bounce one of the Ancient of Lords and that will guarantee him more health in the game, but also guarantee his life codes so many charges on the bow. But I think the one thing that Colento can't do is just do nothing. Yeah, exactly. One thing he could go for here is to, you know, draw a card first with the Wild Growth and then attack in his, uh, his 5-3 Ancient of Lore, realizing that's going to get bounced back. Then he can attack into this Iron for Grizzly and then play the Thorison to be able to get an 8-mana Ancient of Lore next turn so he can weave in a hero power. That could be what we see here. And... It is an option, certainly. Yeah. Um, now, Lakots has another charge, but... Yeah, he would need a kill command to open this wide up here. I feel like still Colento would be in a better position if he had, uh, if he had proc the trap earlier. Uh, just is my opinion. Yeah, it is yeah. kind of troublesome right now that Life Coach is able to kind of freely go to the face with his weapon, considering he has an extra charge. And you know, obviously Colento being on that clock, he's going to want to attack uh, pretty soon. So I feel like. Life Coach can take a risk and start attacking here, but again, he is in danger of dying to that combo. And he, I mean, he did see Clento play two cards out of hand, to be fair, but there are the three on the left side that Clento hasn't touched in a long time. So there could be combo still for Clento to finish out the game and uh, unable, obviously, to, you know, lethal his opponent the previous turn uh, through the taunt and the freezing trap. So Life Coach still doesn't know if Clento has combo. I'm going to just play this out pretty safely here. Now Clento cannot kill him with the combo, so good overall play by Life Coach staying safe. Absolutely here. Uh, I mean, there is another heal here incoming for Clento. No Savage Roar in sight, no Force of Nature. He's already used one at least. It's just getting a bit rough. Uh, now if he kills the Dunasses, that doesn't do anything because he gets 10 health. Yeah. Back, I mean, Life coach is at 20, but he's out of cards, so there's the quick shot potential for sure. But I mean, no taunt for Clento must be a big concern. I think he has to be looking at wild growth to save him right now. Yeah, very interesting play by Life Coach there, deciding to clear the entire board. Wants his, un uh, excuse me, his pile of shredder to remain uncontested so he can get uh, you know repetitive damage in with that. And now Clento on the back foot once more, needs to start picking up some damage here. Obviously, he can heal with that Ancient of Lore, but you know, going to be tough after that. Life Coach representing 9 damage on the field, so picks up anything, he would be lethal if Clento doesn't heal right now. That is true here. Uh, I mean, this is really, really tough. I really don't envy Clento having to make all these calls, but he is just proving himself to be such a strong player under pressure. The one interesting thing is that Life Coach did now see one of the cards out of Clento's hand being played, but now he sees two of them, so if Life Coach is really paying attention, he knows that there's only one card in hand that's not the Ancient of Lore. He knows that there's no way for him to die, so maybe he starts putting damage, pushing damage to the face at this moment. I think there's no question about that yet. And Life Coach is the last player I would expect not to realize something like the uh, bounced engine of lore. As he does take his time, think about every decision. I mean, he was never not going to play the Octo Boom, he was never not going to hear power. So, simply the sit state of uh, this game. But does he go face? I think going face with both, with at least the sweater. He doesn't have to go for the weapon right now, though. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he's realizing that there is, if there is something like Savage Roar, then the Big Game Hunter can't attack anyway. So just Savage Roar won't be able to kill him. He obviously saw the Force Nature earlier. So pretty safe play by Life Coach. Not likely to, to be anything that Clento can do 
to kill life coach obviously one of the considerations is that the minions on life coaches or excuse me on Clento's side can trade into the minions of life coach there's going to be the doctor boom and i believe that is going to be game i don't think there's anything Clento can do right here have to give you there i mean what possible top deck could he get with the ancient of lord there's no innovate left so what could he get even here no taunt so this seems to be i mean he could get it even a Doomsayer, let's say that there's a Doomsayer of the uh, Pal of the Sweater. That's still going to mean, on average, what is it? Uh, five well, damage out of the out of the boom bots, you know, plus five from the weapon and the hero power. It's just too much. Right, that's going to be it. Life Coach, after almost a draining game for both us casters and the players, just finally takes that game and very well played by him. Going to be taking a 1-0 lead in this best of five series. Remember, that is the slowest deck that he has. He has Shaman, a very aggressive Shaman, and a Mech Mage after this. So, going to be even more, you know, smorking coming out of Life Coach from here on out. Something we definitely don't see out of Life Coach very often. But this particular format where players have to play all nine classes throughout the tournament is bringing this out of him. Clento, obviously, with the Warrior, Druid, and Paladin remaining. So we will see what happens as this series moves on. Do you think that uh, this win by Live Coach kind of tilts the series in its favor, or it's uh, not that big of a deal? I think it's a major deal. I mean, but the Druid is the one that couldn't uh, get the win. If Life Coach loses to the Druid, this series is most likely over. So the first mandatory win is out here for Life Coach. And it was close. It was really, really close. But think about how much value that explosive sub got Life Coach. I mean, it probably mitigated 15 damage just, just by the uh, explosive sub there. Yeah, absolutely critical in allowing uh, Life Coach to finish out that game by getting the repetitive damage in and preventing Clanto from basically killing him. Live Coach now going to that aggressive Shaman, something we almost never see out of him. Uh, it actually took him three games to be able to finally take a game off of Firebat when they played in the group stages. He uh, fell down 0-2 and two, trying to get a win out of the Shaman, finally beat Firebat Shaman in what was a crazy game back and forth went down to top deck mode for several turns at the end and he was finally able to take it there but that's kind of the difficulty that he ran into when he was uh, trying to pilot an aggressive deck so we'll see if he can you know manage to steal a victory here yeah I think if the Druid is going to beat uh, one of, of like his deck it's going to be easier to beat the Shaman than the mage because the shaman is more reliant on the early game working out as there's no uh dr boom there's no for, and i guess no antonidas as well so i feel like yeah this is the game the Colanto needs to win but the game that life coach can't lose i think this is going to be a critical game in this series gets the tunnel trog on turn one does life coach Clento has a pretty solid hand as well obviously with uh you know, a couple pieces of removal in the Keeper and the Wrath, as well as, you know, the ramp to back it up. What does Clinto go here? Does he go for the Darnassus, or does he go for the Wild Growth? Darnassus can be pretty risky, but uh, Clinto seems like he's in the mood for taking that risk and plops it out on the field. Yeah, with Machwarper and, I mean, wow, Rock Butter, that couldn't get any better, honestly. After that, okay, Wild Growth, but... Oh, this is looking... <coughs> Okay, I mean, the double weapon, though, isn't going to do like put any favors, and there's no sweater, and, and doesn't have the mana to use it right now. Is he going to really get any value out of that uh, power miss? I think that may be the, the key thing, or he's just going to be going face. I think if he's just going face, that may be not enough pressure, because what you need with this type of shaman deck is to get minions on the board early that can get damage every turn, not start bursting on, on turn three. Uh, so yeah, I'm worried for for life coach, but the the uh, the rock butter is is just critical here. Yeah, it looks like life coach is leaning toward that mech over. However, realizing that maybe playing on curve is the way he's going to win. Obviously, that rock biter can be useful later with the whirling zapomatic or the doom hammer. So gonna go ahead and go with this play, realizing that Clento, if he uses the hero power to start clearing out this board, then he's not doing too much else. So yeah, we will see what Clento goes with here. He could use that hero power to clear what one of these minions wouldn't be too expensive and maybe save the Wrath for a rainier day. Or maybe you go for 
you know, the wild growth so that uh, you can guarantee ramp into your later minions like you see the Ancient of Lore and Doctor Boom, which are pretty heavy and pretty clunky in Clento's hand. So Clento's going to analyze everything here, as did Life Coach last turn. I'm going to try to come up with the best option here. Uh, after we had a pretty good start by both players, you know, the Tunnel Truck into the Mech Warper, and for Clento having these all these early options, I mean, after this, after he, you know, plays the Wild Growth and the Wrath and the uh, Keeper, I mean, double seven drops in Clento's hand, so going to be interesting to see how they handle this somewhat clunky start for both players. I think one thing to consider behind Life Coach going for the Mech Warper instead of the Rock Fighter is that Life Coach figures that it needs some value out of the uh, Power Mace, and if you're using the Rock Fighter to kill a 3 health minion, the few 3 health minion that are actually in the Druid deck, then he's not going to be doing too well now. Crips the first power mace. I feel like if you only had one power mace, you would have gone for the Rock Fighter here instead of the Mac Warper, but he has the 1-1 one, one alive. Um, Colento will probably have to waste the whole turn now, but I still like the Wild Girls. You can go Wild Girls into Keeper, into Boom, and that seems very hard to stop. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like he agrees with you. Going to go with that, and uh, we'll have the mana to be able to even uh, innervate into one of his 7 drops next turn if he so desires. Now, Life Coach can get out that Whirling Zapomatic and turn into a 5-4 as well that could force out the uh, Keeper of the Girl from Clento rather than going for one of his big 7 drops. We'll see what Life Coach decides to go with here. And... Um, yeah, do you think he's going to go for anything other than just the Whirling Zapomatic plus Hero Power? Because this feels like such a good opportunity to buff up one of his mechs. Oof, I think... I don't know, it's, it's tough. I, I think there's some merit to the... Uh, to the Unstable... Uh, Unbound Elemental, I think, but... It depends on the Taunt. Or not, if it gets the Taunt to him or not here... Uh, I guess if he has the second power mace, he would want to look at going for the mech now to get the buff out of it. So I do agree with Alcott in the end. Wasn't an obvious choice, but I do agree with what he went for. Now, Colento can't go for the Dr. Boom, I feel now. I think now it has to be the Keeper, which is a bit painful. Right, yeah. But if he doesn't go for the Keeper now, then he's taking 16 damage to the face from that Rock Butter weapon next turn. So I feel like he has to silence that right now, which, again, is pretty painful. You really want to get out that Dr. Boom on turn 5, would, or even turn 4. It would feel pretty good for Clento, but obviously, you know, he's kind of forced here. Yeah, that is too... Uh... Oof. I mean, still, then he's still taking damage, and Life Coach has top decks like the Doomhammer, like the, the Crackle, for example. Uh, so he can just run away with this, but I like Colento's hand, though, overall. He had the Wild Coat, he had the Darnassus, now in the way Dr. Boom and Keeper, but he just kind of needs a swipe to really close this out here. Yeah, definitely. You see Colento kind of hovering over that uh, Innervate. Maybe he could commit to killing off this Tunnel Trog as well. Looks like he is going to commit to that, realizing that he does have the Shredder and Hero Power to work with next turn, and can wait a bit for that Doctor Boom or the Ancient of Lore in the future. Realizing the danger of this Tunnel Trog, uh, either to trade with the Keeper of the Grove, or to you know get more damage to the face if there is some sort of um, overload in the hand of Life Coach. No overload quite yet, but he can you know get annoying for Clento by playing that annoy Chan on the field. I think you're actually right there. Uh, annoying is definitely the word for, for Noyage one here, but he kind of wants to be attacking with a weapon sooner or later. There just kind of isn't the option to do that at this turn. There is so, if he had six mana, going for both the power <laughs> mace and the uh, and then Unbound would be so strong, and he really wants to get the buff on the Annoyed one. It's probably the best minion to buff with that Power Miss. And Life Code seems to be uh, favoring the Power Miss here, going for the Annoyed one. Maybe he figures that Colento has a 6 drop and then won't be killing the Annoyed one, but we do know that Colento is most likely going to be going for the Hero Power with the Sweater. Darnassus doesn't really help him here. It's going to be close. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Klento forced to kind of sacrifice away his Keeper of the Grove here. Life Coach not hitting the face with his Power Mace. Instead of making sure that he kills off this Keeper of the Grove, he could obviously get a decent attack onto this Shredder next turn as well. So he was thinking he wants to get as much value out of this as possible, make sure make sure to clear the board, clear the way for the rest of his minions to kind of get the work in. But yeah, I can't really see anything other than playing the Pallid Shredder plus Hero Powering Down this Noitron. I mean, this deck from Life Coach is so aggressive that you... I mean, there's so many options in there that have to be aggressive rather than just having to be mech. So, not going to be too likely... It's not going to be 100% chance that he's going to be having a mech in hand for him to buff next turn. So, I feel like Klento just has to get rid of this noise on right here, right now. I'm really impressed by Life Coach, honestly, in this game because he's making the best out of a very, very tough situation. Uh, wow doesn't go for the hero power this is going to be able to buff this noitron maybe he isn't too worried about it but i mean life coach here can get some pretty value trades with this noitron or even just hit the face here for extra damage yeah i mean i think it's sooner or later he will need to start going face and I'd be surprised if he doesn't just empty his entire hand here i'm not sure completely going i think he made trade with the power match possibly uh and what did he trade into then? We're going to be looking at the Darnassus being killed, most likely. Yeah, this is so tough for Life Coach, honestly, because, I mean, it's so much damage to give up. If, I mean, you can go 9 damage to face right now just on board, and on top of that, you have a 4 damage Lightning Bolt in your hand, as well as, obviously, that Rock Biter. So it's so tempting to just hit the face right now, but, I mean, on the other hand, if you start clearing these minions, it makes it very difficult for Clento to deal with this. If he starts, you know, restricting his options, look like Life Coach is kind of sticking with his roots and trying to clear the board instead of, you know, full on smorking it up. Going to be able to clear a lot of a lot of this. Now going to actually use Lightning Bolt onto this Pallid Shredder. And uh, let's see what comes out of here. Going to be a King's Elec and going to hit the face with the rest of his minions. So kind of a, a in-between play there. And Colento needs to really, you know, navigate this situation carefully. I have to agree with you. This is the second game here where we're seeing Colento being on defensive with his Druid. And that's what happens when you have these decks that are able to put on pressure turn 1, turn 2, turn 3. Uh, this is, yeah, even tougher than dealing with the Super Star because you also have the burst potential. But now. Oh, the that crack is guaranteed the lethal right now. Picks it up, only needed a little bit of damage, and gets it. And that's going to be game two going to Life Coach with our, arguably the deck he's least comfortable with. And yeah, just a commanding lead for Life Coach in this series. Able to take it out. Unfortunate for Kalento. He, he is one step out the door now in this tournament. I think a very important thing to mention, though, is we were talking about the Druid being the weak point of uh, of Colento's lineup. And in Conquest, you can either go for your strongest decks first, try to get two easy wins, and then have three tries with your weakest deck, or you can just start with your weakest deck. And it feel, it looks worse when you start with your weakest deck, but I feel like if, if Colento wins against the Mac mates, he could absolutely pull a 3-2 three, uh, a, a three win and, and take this whole series. So... It was very important. I think Colento's best chance was to beat the Shaman, but it's possible here to do with, with uh, the Druid. But he's starting with the Warrior. All right. Hmm. Yeah, it could be something where Colento feels like uh, this could be a good chance for him to kind of shut down a life coach and get some momentum in this series overall. And uh, keep in mind, guys, we have seen many comebacks, many reverse sweeps in this tournament, particularly because the players, again, have to play online classes. So you're going to be seeing some weaker classes, potentially some weaker decks in, this, in uh, all the best of fives that they have to play. Now, uh, Life Coach did get the Shaman out of the way, but not out of the woods quite yet. Just have to pilot this Mech Mage to a victory. But I feel like getting that Shaman out of the way is absolutely huge for him. Obviously, the Hunter, we felt like, was going to be able to pick up a win. But Shaman, a completely different story. We will see if Life Coach can ride that victory to the finals here. Yeah, the Mech Mage was actually slightly favored against Control Warrior uh, before uh, the changes that happened. Now, people have been playing Control Warrior rather differently now with, with Bass and Jester Carp, but it used to be when Mech Mage was played a lot uh, 
at the start of Goblins versus Gnomes, it was a favorite against Control Warriors. Only slightly though, because you had such an easy time of getting a board of three to four minions and keeping the advantage for several turns. And that's exactly the pace style that a uh, Warrior struggles to face. But I mean, Clento has two fiery war axes and uh, Shield Slam is looking good for him, I think. Ooh. Life Coach going to commit to that Mech Warper, wanting to get a turn to Spider Tank, but going to be really painful when he comes up against Clento's Fiery War X. Obviously, Clint, Life Coach realizing that this is a possibility, but not uh, just wanting to take the risk here. Realizing that if he is able to snowball this game from Mech Warper into Spider Tank, you know, into those uh, Tinkertown Technicians, it would almost be game over unless Clento gets a clutch brawl. So. Uh, interesting gamble by him, but does not pay off. Kalento with the tempo BGH rather than playing the Acolyte. Very interesting turn by him. And uh, crazy read, honestly. Realizing that Life Coach wanted to go for the uh, the Mech Warper into Spider Tank. And Kalento knowing that he had no way to deal with that other than the premium removal that is that Shield Slam. So such a crazy play by Kalento. Reading the hand of Life Coach and playing out the tempo BGH. Yeah, I mean, the uh, BGH can trade with... I believe almost everything. I mean, he's probably expecting like could be playing uh, Spider Tank instead of Harvest Golem. But I mean, Colento figures okay in the late game. I have already a Shield Slam and an Execute. So if a Doctor Doom comes down, I have two ways of removing it. In the late game, I'm very unlikely to only have one or two cards where uh, the value would matter. It's more about having the mana to get everything out in time. Now. This is a bit painful. The mirror entity is really, really nice and matches up a lot of Colento's plans here. Is it even possible to shield slam uh, the uh, Akala to try to draw something like a, a armor? I don't think it's it's strong, but uh, does he also re-equip the axe? I don't think so. It's painful for Colento. I mean, this was done to look... In, it, it looked insane for Colento, but now Lycos may have a chance. Still, he has no options here on turn 5. Going for Ping and Tinkertown into a Fiery War is just not viable. Yeah, definitely. Live Coach in a really awkward position right now. Looks like he's going to play out the Tinkertown Technician without the buff. And uh, does Kalento just play out this Just a Car and kill off the Mirror Entity right away? Because that would be the, the easiest kill that he would get off of any Mirror Entity here. If he plays out the Shield Maiden, obviously it would be difficult to deal with. Won't be able to deal with it until the next turn until you get the... Uh, the shield slam afterward, but uh, and even the uh, the sludge belcher would be annoying to deal with right now. Um, I think it's true. Yeah, I think uh, in this case with the control war, you have so many comeback potentials in terms of armor that you don't really worry about a fireball. You worry about three or four minions attacking your face every turn. So taking six damage is not a big deal versus uh, something like life coats having his mech corper. Uh, go uncontested and, and getting three more minions on the board and starting to attack every turn. So this isn't a big deal for Kalento. He already has the tank of ability and, and has many more options. But this Power of the Sky Golem is an option here. I think that uh, just has to be uh, what Life Coach goes for. I mean, he picks his both in Paladin and Mage. And maybe he's going to prove to us now why this is such a strong card. But on the flip side, though, Kalento has Shield made and plus Shield Slam. He also has Hero Power Shield Slam Monkey. Yeah, Hero Power Shield Slam Monkey seems pretty good here, especially because he can equip this Fire War X to kill the 3-3 that pops out. So good for Kalento here. So doesn't it doesn't get to equip the monkey, or not equip the monkey, doesn't get to play the monkey, but uh, is able to clear the board, which is pretty hard to do when there's a pilot of Sky Golem on the field. And uh, Life Coach's love for that pile of Sky Golem really kind of burning him in this situation because, I mean, it didn't really work out in the early game. He wasn't able to get any tempo, and right when he plays it, it just gets immediately cleared. And so too here. Uh, now, there is the option for oh, Hulk Holland. So he gets a slam! Wow. That's the best possible card I can think of in this position here. Yeah. Other than maybe a second BGH, but has the actually and the Taskmaster as well. I mean... I feel like Slam has to be it, though. You can go Slam, Execute, and Belcher. How strong is that? 
I mean, he can he, the he can do either, right? He can develop the board more with his cool Taskmaster and use the execute. You, you can use the slam for something else in the future. So I kind of like him developing the board here. But yeah, like you said, either the slam or the cool Taskmaster were excellent cards in the situation because either otherwise he would have to you know give up his acolyte or take damage seven damage to the face to activate the execute. And now Clinton looking in an absolutely dominant position. I have to agree with you there. I mean, this is going to be Kalento's game to lose. There's the possibility of Antoniras just getting a lot of value and Kalento continuing to draw low value cards here, but he has the Aquilera Pain plus the, uh, plus the Slam, so it's at least two cards drawn. He's going to draw another card next turn, so he's going to have five cards to work with, at least maybe six, and having all these things set up. <laughs> What can Lab Coast do here? Yeah, that's the crazy thing about this situation, right? Usually when you're playing the Control Warrior, you kind of run out of cards trying to keep up with the uh, Mech Mage because you're trying not to die. But in this situation, Clento is fine on card draw. Doesn't have to worry about that at all. It looks like Life Coach is going to commit a Fireball first and foremost and actually going to play this Goblin Blast Mage, maybe? Yeah, he's going to commit to it even though it's really risky with his Acolyte on the field. Does draw an extra card for Clento, but uh, crucially, it does clear out the um, the uh, uh, slime there, but and it yeah, also that slime was the actually yeah, like very, hitting hitting that uh, taskmaster is very important. Basically, throws away two mana because now Colanto will have to slam if he's not going to shield slam. I feel like slam is the correct call here, but yeah, slam attack. When you're looking at sixteen health. What are you going to follow that up with? Monkey, Acolyte, possibly? Yeah, the, the crazy the, the Doctor Boom, oh, the Doctor Boom is... The, yeah. This is crazy. Colento keeps on top taking everything he needs here, turn after turn. Yeah, very good top deck by him there, getting to have that Doctor Boom to go on the field. And uh, crucially, he's already seen one Fireball, so he's not going to die to anything crazy like, you know, Fireball, Fireball, Frostbolt in this situation. Obviously, Life Coach doesn't even have the mana for it, so I like Clanto playing very uh, greedily, very aggressively here. Obviously, has the tank up at his disposal for future turns. Not going to be uh, afraid, and in fact, this is better for keeping him alive, you know, getting the, minions, the biggest minion on the board to contest whatever Life Coach can play. Yeah, that is true here. Uh... Uh, it, it's it's so hard to see, you know, light at the end of the tunnel here for life coach. Could it just be if we go into the situation where life coach is two one up, he still has the potential to be the druid and the paladin. I mean, the paladin is the complete walkover. It is the secret paladin? Mechmids can win that with a good start. I feel it's getting rougher and rougher uh, for the secret uh, for the for the mechmates because. There really is no good answer to uh, secret uh, for the mystery challenger, sorry, other than just going face and ignoring it. So, Mac Warper and getting ahead is what he'll have to do. Yeah, definitely. So, we will see what happens in that game. As far as this game is concerned, Clento just trying to finish out, put the finishing touches on it, is able to clear out the uh, Tinkertown Technician just with the Boom Bot. So, that's going to feel pretty good for him. Going to just throw out, out his uh, two, three drops. He also, already played the, the Armorsmith. Uh, previously, and just probably going to hit face with this uh, Dr. Boom. And uh, this game feels almost over right now. I mean, there's no stealth spell part in Life Coach's hand, so something like a top deck Antoninus really wouldn't do too much. And uh, we might even see a concede here. That is true. Uh, he's even playing for value at this point. And when you're playing for value against a Mac, which you're probably doing quite well, going for the hero power just to be able to cycle that in. Uh, 21 health, way ahead on board, ahead on value even. I mean, is Lyco just going to flood the board and, and what is that going to accomplish? He's almost dead. He's going to end up going for the fireball ping, but this gives Colento more and more armor and it's almost like quicksand. You know, the more you struggle, the harder it gets here for life coach. Yeah, absolutely. Very uh, apt description there. So, Quanto, I imagine he's just going to draw more cards off of this Acolyte. I wonder if he commits to the Shield Slam on this uh, Yeti. He has the Brawl as backup if uh, you ever see an Antinice on the field. But could be a situation where he doesn't even want to take that chance. And um, what, what would you commit here? Would you go with the Sylvanas or would you want to save that for a potential Antinitis Stealth? 
Uh, he could also just go for the Shield Maiden, kind of, uh, you know, dominate the board that way. Could also go over this Despite just to kill off this Yeti right away. And uh, again, I've been thinking about, you know, him taking up, using the tank up as part of his, uh, his turn, but I guess he doesn't need to do that. He's seen two fireballs, so yeah. He could just, you know, throw this guy in, uh, throw this Despite in, and play a six drop here. Wouldn't really make too much difference. And uh, yeah, kind of just play this Sylvanas out to prevent any sort of, uh, anything coming out from Life Coach, really. Yeah, it denies Antonidas, and he's already seen both fireballs, so how is Lapkos going to deal with this other than just putting minions onto the board? And that just feels so horrible when that happens. Now, I mean, it's just... Klento can just start going aggressive even at this point. Yeah, the crazy thing is Klento has had the opportunity to go aggressive for a little while here, but obviously as a control war, you kind of don't want to take any chances, realizing that, you know, maybe something crazy can happen. So Clento going to be taking it a bit slow, at least thus far. I mean, he did attack face with the uh, the Doctor Boom earlier because he didn't want to, you know, waste an attack on the Pile of the Shredder. But for now, we are going to be going into the last stage of this game. Life Coach holding on for dear life, going to play it out till the end. Maybe just try to fatigue Clento. We did see Clento was a bit tired there. And uh, Baron Geddon comes down. I mean, Clento could play this even into the Mirror Entity. Wouldn't matter too much. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, let's, let's say that he does. Chase into the uh, Snow Choker, chase the Sylvanas into the uh, into the Spider Tank, and then he can steal the Baron Geddon. <laughs> Double Baron Geddon. That would be absolutely amazing. So, I, th I kind of like it. Just go for the Double Baron Geddon. Yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty crazy. Although you do hurt your own Baron Geddons there, so it would be making double seven threes. But, I mean, if it takes a Frostbolt, I think it's perfectly fine. Looks like he actually is going to go for it. Let's see if he actually, you know, tries to steal it as well. And it looks like that actually go is going to be the play as we see him start attacking into the Snow Chugger. I really want to see this, actually. It seems to be what he's going for, yeah. Um, I mean, now there's the potential. Okay, he's just going to full on YOLO into this. I like it. I really like it. <laughs> I love this play. This is absolutely amazing. So yeah, going to hit the spider tank, and we have double get it in the field, guys. And <laughs> this game is pretty much over. But as a a final act, you know, Clento gonna be taking his opponent's Baron get in. And, Maybe fire uh, is the counter to this type of uh, <laughs> mates. I mean, with all the force bolts and that. But yeah, with two spare parts and a, I mean, it's, it's not good for Lalcos to show him even more of his decks. Because there is a the potential for Colento just to have been busy and not looked at every single card. Although he can kind of assume maybe 25 cards without even you know looking at the deck list at this point. But yeah, that means that Lacos is 2-1 up. He'll need to win only with his mech mage and Colento will need to get a win both of with his uh, mid-range druid and his secret paladin. And neither of the matchups are that good actually. I mean Lacos is favored with the mech mage against the druid and it's a close game with the uh, Secret Paladin, so Life Coach might be looking at a final here, and that's kind of crazy, because he isn't known as a player with a lot of variety. He just kind of decides what the three or four best decks in the meta is, and then practices those decks to no end. That seems to be his style. Yeah, definitely the case. I remember talking to him at uh, Dream Hack Bucharest, and it was right when Grim Patron was starting to become a popular deck, and because it was played by a few players there, he was asking us, asking uh, Powder and I, uh, is the, is Grim Patron good? You know, should I start using it? We're like, yeah, it looks, seems like it's going to be a pretty good deck. And so from then on, he uh, dedicated so much time to practicing it that he became basically an expert on the deck. Looks like we're going to be going into Paladin versus Mage for our next uh, game here. And uh, like you said, pretty close matchup in this situation. Will be imperative for the uh, for the Mech Mage to get ahead. Did I? Say it was secret paladin. It is it is the mid range paladin, correct? It's the mid range. Yeah, you're. I, I said the secret. I was wrong about that. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of funny when the patient was nerfed. Uh, I, I think I was doing casting research on 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 life codes and and I saw him. I think he streamed five hours, four hours, five hours, and four hours of patron, and then the day after that, the deck got nerfed. It was so <laughs> sad to see, but that's just what happens now. Uh, Colento, I like keeping the Aldo, but I'm not sure if you want to go for the rest now. Is he going to be going hardcore for that Ooh. one and two drop? He does, and he ends up getting punished. Wow. This may be oh, no. impossible for Colento. Look this at this hand from Life Coach. Ugh. <laughs> no party or us to save oh, Colento no. now. Yeah, without a zombie child, there's no way to kill this mech warper, so Life Coach is just going to go for it. 
And he can play out both Mech yes. Warper and the Snow Chugga next turn. This is looking really bad for Kalento, though. He, I mean, starting from turn three on, he does have some answers here, but it's going to be pretty brutal. I bet Life Coach wanted some more mechs actually in his hand rather than those Goblin Blast Mages. Usually, those are great cards to have, but I imagine he'd want to see something like a Paladin Shredder just to get out more presence on the board. Even a Spider Tank. You could have played a Spider Tank now for one mana if he had it. Uh, Life Coach is going for phase. I like that. I like that a lot. Feels like Quartermaster isn't even a card at this point now. Colento can go for the outdoor, but I think Life Coach's idea is also uh, I have the Blast Mates, I want to have as many targets for the Blast Mates as possible. A 1 1 is, is perfect for that, so I won't kill the 1 1 because of that. Also, I want to finish this game off before turn 7 or 8, where Colento might possibly clear my board. Yeah, that's exactly the case. Wants to just start getting the damage in. Obviously, even something like Muster for Battle wouldn't really make the math any different in this situation. Life Coach could be worried. Oh, one mana off being able to play that pile of Sky Golem. But uh, yeah, obviously Life Coach might be worried about something like a Consecrate here, but uh, obviously the previous, previous turn wasn't going to be that case. Now, whatever Life Coach does here, Clento does have the opportunity to potentially buff up uh, one of his minions with the Aldor, or I, I guess it would only be the 1-1, one, one. so I guess Life Coach, with nothing else to do other than ping, uh, Li Clento not going to be able to use the Alderman to very good uh, value here. Maybe I just have to get zero value and place it on your uh, your Aldor Peacekeeper just to get a minion under the board. The thing is, he can trade it and then do it. Oh, yeah, he can heal it. Just right, right. heal it up, yeah. Right, 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 and right. That's not bad at all. I mean, this, this is decent for Clento. Yeah, is able to get that heal, and uh, Life Coach gets the Spider Tank a bit too late in this situation, and uh, we might be seeing a Goblin Blast Mage, but, I mean, even if he goes for that, it's going to be really crucial that he gets the right, uh, the pings off. The flexibility, yeah, it's not something that a big game hunter can really do. Think about the big game hunter versus Ultraman, you know. Ultraman has a fantastic card, it's my favorite card in the new expansion. Turning the game around here for Kalento almost... Pretty good hit though for, for uh, life coach, but is it going to be enough? Yeah, it doesn't actually get the kill on any of them, so I mean, th I think he would have preferred to get a kill on at least one of these creatures, but uh, isn't able to get it, and now has a really tough decision to make whether or not he wants to, you know, trade in his minions or just go face again here. I think he just has to go face once more. That is true. He can't go for a second blast, but most likely if Colento ends up trading, but uh. Kalento has options in terms of both the low uh, in terms of, I mean, yeah, let, let's say that Kalento trades into the into the uh, Snow Choker, there's still... I don't know, this is just so rough for Kalento. Yeah, Kalento does have some options here, though. I mean, obviously that Cog Hammer can, you know, do some... Oh, refer, refer Life Code, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so like, Kalento... Uh, now that it's his turn, I mean, I guess the Cog Hammer doesn't do a whole lot because he can't use his face right now, but uh, can play the either the Lothab or the Sludge Belcher. I imagine it's going to be the Sludge Belcher, even though it doesn't get the greatest trade off with that Goblin Blast Mage. Uh, can also start clearing out the minions onto the board using his minions, and yeah, even though it's going to get this Keeper uh, frozen here, it's still a pretty value trade, and in fact, going to go for the Lothab, doesn't want to, again, get the, the bad trade onto his Sludge Belcher. Yeah, I mean, it also sets up a trap for Life Coach. Life Coach has been going phase turn after turn here, and if he does, Clinto can just call Hammer and kill the uh, Blast Mage with the Lothar pretty easily. Even though he doesn't do anything to follow that up, it's still going to be really, really good, and that's exactly Ooh. what happened. But Clinto, yeah, is he going to ping it or not? The Life Coach, if Life Coach doesn't ping, I am going to be so, so, so impressed by him. Oh, wow. So look, It'd be yeah. godlike, you know, intuition to think that there would be a Cockhammer, but yeah, I mean... Mm. This is pretty painful to watch right here. So Clento's going to get a very good trade right now. And uh, the, the one, you know, good thing about this situation for Life Coach is that he can activate this Goblin Blast Mage since he has a mech on the field still. And... I mean, I imagine he's going to have to go for the Fireball and ping here. It's, it's painful, but the Octo Boom to follow that up, it's not bad. Thing is, yeah, if he goes to the Blast Mates, he'll need some pretty good hits just to trade into the Lothar, but if he doesn't, 
get two damage in the low tip, it's just gonna be lights out for him. So, I mean, well, fireball ping, it's gonna put him down to twelve. Colento drops Doctor Boom. It's still really, really good for Colento. He could go for the Goblin Blast Mage, and he only needs one damage really onto the low tip. Yeah, two because of the ping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess it's it's a point. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, still. I think Life Coach is looking at that fireball and p thinking potentially it could finish out the game onto Clinto's face. And uh, getting mm -hmm. a 5-4 on the field is pretty important, especially because he's most likely... Oh, it looks like he's going to go for the fireball uh, just to clear the board here. And, uh, you know, it does get 3 damage to the face this way, so it is pretty valuable. And there's no way for Clinto to deal with it on board. But, um, yeah, Life Coach, realizing that he has the, uh, the you know, the Doctor Room next turn to be able to deal with this, Clinto... No fear once more. Even I think though, a crucial yeah. card for this for uh, Colento is going to be the Belcher. Maybe coming up here soon. Uh, I can't imagine Life Coach not dropping his own uh, Dr. Boom, but now just come down to how much damage do the, uh, do the Boom Bust do and, and with the Frostbolt on top of this. Nine health left if he goes face. Life Coach goes face. I think if, if average Boom Bots happen, Life Coach could just win this through pure burst, as I feel like Colento will have to go something like Juggler Belcher next turn. Yeah, definitely. It, I mean, it would be really tough to go for that lay on hand, especially if you're facing down a Dr. Boom from your opponent. So, yeah, we will see the attack on the face. I wonder what's going to happen here. He could go for the Goblin Blast Mage, could also go for the Dr. Boom, like he said, which would put a lot of pressure onto Colento. Really tough decision here for Life Coach. Had that really fast start, but again, just couldn't follow it up after the Mech Warper, Mech Warper, and Snow Chugga. It has to be a tough call for Life Coach. I mean, there is also the option of just freezing the Dr. Boom, possibly going for the Blast Mage, but that could backfire badly. Right. Yeah, freezing the Dr. Boom, it just it seems like a desperate play. And you kind of have to have, uh, I think, a bigger board in order to be able to do that. It looks like he's gonna, thinking about pinging. No, okay, he's going to go for the Dr. Boom in the end. Obviously, the big threat of, with this is if you're Oh, he going... didn't. Uh... Sorry? No, mind, no, mind. So I mean, there's also the, the, the thing that he's facing a Paladin. There's the Aldor. He, there may even be another Uldaman. This could be an equality. There's so many ways to deal with a, a Dr. Boom. On yeah. top of the, yeah, hmm. that's exactly I think why Life Coach was considering that play so long, and he finally went within the end, realizing that this could be his one chance to take the victory. If he goes for a lesser play, then Clento has on the board ways to deal with it. So yeah, risking the Eldor, risking the Keeper, risking you know Big Game Hunter here, but uh, looks like it's kind of paid off for him. Clento doesn't have a ready-made answer. Obviously, he has his own Doctor Boom, but you know that might not be enough to save Clinton in the long run. It's true here. The zombie shell for the extra juggle might be very important and the Leon hands most likely save him here. I kinda like trading first. Oh Clinton. four damage to face Clinto did not want to see that, I guarantee you. That is absolutely ridiculous. Doesn't clear off Kills off his own zombie chow, doesn't clear off the spider tank, but now he's able to use his other boom bot in order to uh, clear that off. So, clear board for Clento, but can Life Coach pick up a win somehow here? He can play the Goblin Blast Mage along with the, the Shredder. I wonder if that's the play here. It wouldn't be too bad. I think another option is uh, Paladin Sky Golem and just ping face even. It gives it away pretty hard though. It doesn't seem like something that Life Coach would go for, so I think the Blast Mage is going to be the choice here. And Killing the juggler would be nice for any damage to face. Wow, okay. gets three damage to face. That Goblin Blast Mage knows where it's at. And now Kalento has to use his Lay on Hands here or he is out of the tournament. He at least knows that there's going to be no fireball. So maybe he may even be greedy. Ooh, that would be the end of him pretty much like actually guaranteed here. So yeah, we know he has to go for the Lay on Hands, but... How greedy will Clento be here? Obviously, I mean, it's it feels really bad to go for the lay on hands if your opponent doesn't indeed have lethal uh, and, you know, not committing to the board. Because, I mean, look at it from, from Clento's perspective. He really wants to commit minions to the board to be able to combat his opponent's board. If he does go for the lay on hands here, then he's basically ceding the board to the life coach because of the fact that there's the Goblin Blast Mage on there that can readily trade into it. Looks like he's going to start off with a trade from the, uh, the Sludge Belcher here. 
the knife misses completely, and it's a haunted creeper, and he's not going to go for oh, the no. lay on hands. Ooh. No, wait, he, he has to do something about that, though. He needs some good pings. I he needs to ping the Goblin Blast Mage, or it won't even matter about the Frostbolt. So he's actually just dead on board, and that's going to be it. Kalento's going to go down, and Life Coach is going to be your winner. He will advance to the finals to face Tom60229. Wow. What an upset, honestly. I mean, Life Coach beating Kalento with Hunter, Shaman, and Mates against Warrior Dude Paladin. And Warrior Dude Paladin, that's, that's the lineup you want for the finals. It's the lineup you want when you're going to guarantee a win. Colento played, I guess, some of his weaker decks to be able to have both Druid and Paladin for the semifinal and just falling 3 to 1 in Life Coach. Life Coach must be ecstatic about that. But think about it how important that boom bot for four was. We wouldn't be talking about, about it if, if, if it had hit anything else in that case. So, Tom versus Life Coach, what a fantastic final we have in store for us here. Yeah, absolutely. Tom versus Life Coach, such great players that have so many results in tournaments up until this point. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And uh, we can, I believe, give you those classes right now. Tom is going to be playing the Mage, Hunter, and Rogue, whereas Life Coach is going to be going with Warlock, Druid, and Rogue, if I can read my own writing here. And uh, that's going to be actually pretty good classes for both of them. Hope you guys want to watch that as much as we do. So make sure you stick around and uh, watch it after this quick break.